happy Sunday to you. Happy Memorial Day weekend. Um, happy Memorial Day. Hope everybody's doing well. We have, oh, we got 13 people chiming in. Four thumbs up already before I even said a darn thing. Somebody gave me thumbs up. I appreciate that. Uh, let me adjust my camera a little. That might be a little better. All right. As always, please tell me if you can see me. Hear me, all those things. Ice Hog, 1990, good to see you. Captain Crow's here. Somebody's uh, somebody's getting a big king on the pond. Bruce McFadden is catching some fish. Good to, good to hear, Bruce. Robert Finney saying howdy. All right, but like I said, please let me know that you can see. Okay, loud and clear. Ice Hog saying Lima Charlie, I'm glad to hear it. All right, man, thank you very much. Looking and sounding good. I don't know about looking, but sounding a maybe maybe we can stretch that one. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Chris Olson, the show starts. Yep, it does. Um, yeah, you can tell my my face is a little sun cooked. My voice is a little scratchy. I'm a little sleepy, but I love it all. Um, been out on the water, been on the boat. You know, it's Memorial Weekend, so I'm pretty busy. Had a trip this morning. Had a really really fun group uh fun group of guys on the boat this morning. Nick Padula saying hello. Good, good hello back to you, Nick. So I only got 17 people here. Let's let a few more jump on. I'm gonna have a you ever had dots, pretzels? I'm telling you right now. I these things are so good. I like I they're sitting next to me and I can't stop eating them, so I apologize. I'm gonna eat one. They're so good. Oh, if you got those in your area, grab a bag. You'll be, you'll thank me later. I guarantee it. Mike Epp. How you doing, Mike? Good to see you, man. Mike, your uh, your check showed up for Megan's Army, so thank you very much for that. We'll talk about that here in a moment. I guess I'll, I'll let a few more people jump on, and then we'll talk about we'll talk about Megan's Army and a few other things. Brad Deutschman, good to see you. Good evening, back to you. So what's everybody doing this weekend? Everybody cooking out right now? Having an adult beverage? What are you doing? What are you up to? Anybody out fishing? Well, I know Bruce McFadden said that, uh, yeah, Mike, definitely. Um, I know Bruce McFadden said he's out on the water. I believe that's what he said. That's cool. Uh, it's beautiful here. This morning was just gorgeous on the water. Just gorgeous. Patrick Forster said he just got off the water. Mike, you got to buy a new motor. You had to buy a new motor? Oh, man. Sorry to hear that. Mark Pearson's going walleye fishing in the morning. Good luck to you, man. Todd just got off the lake. Dave Ristow saying hello. Hello back to you, Dave. 40 people here. Takes a couple minutes, but then, uh, like, within five minutes, we'll have a whole bunch of people on here. Uh, Dakotas. Somebody just asked me about Dakotas. Uh, Andy, you're not joking. That's a good way to put it, dude. These are the dream weaver of pretzels. I mean, these are these are the the goods. There's no doubt. These are the goods. Love these things. I, I want to eat one right now, and I'm going to put it down so I, I'm not eating on camera. It's pretty pretty rude of me. But uh, what was I just going to talk about? My brain just took a took a left turn and just went someplace else. Anyway, I was going to talk about something. I can't remember what the heck it was now. So I apologize. Like I said, my brain's a little cooked. You can see my face is a little sunburnt. My lips are chapped. I've slept like two hours and two days. I'm happy. I'm, I'm <laughs> happy in this condition, I guess. I, I really do enjoy it. All right. Clyde canceled trip in the morning. Dakotas. Yeah, Dakotas. Um, I get a lot of questions about Dakotas. You know, are they the best out there? Uh, should I get them? What are what Dakotas for this and whatnot? Thanks for the reminder, whoever that was. Um, Dakotas used to be like the creme de la creme here on Lake Michigan. Like back, I think they really started coming around in the late, late 2010, 2009, somewhere in there, if I remember right. And, uh, man, they, they used to be, and I say used to be because I've noticed over the last couple of years, the quality on the Dakotas has slipped. And this is just my opinion. You can disagree with me all you want. I'll respect it. But my opinion is they aren't what they used to be. Those things used to have like the best drag, uh, the best gears, the best everything, and they were liquid smooth. And man, were they strong! Uh, I've just seen so many come into the shop, and I fished on other charter boats that have them, 
and they just seem to be falling apart. And uh, I don't know why. I can't point my finger at it. There's no reason that I could. But uh, the quality has slipped, I believe, on Dakotas. Um, again, just my two cents. If you disagree with me, like I said, I respect it. But that is my opinion. Uh, for my for my wire rods, my dipsy, di or, I'm sorry, my wire divers and my uh, downriggers, um, I, I went to the Daiwa Saltists. And uh, they're about the same. They are, they actually, they are. I think they're the same exact price as Dakotas in Tangle Tackle. Matt President's just showing up and throwing $10 Super Chat just like that. What a good dude. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate that, man. Happy Memorial Day to you. Everybody thank Matt for me, if you would, or for yourselves, please. But, yeah, uh, for the money, uh, I mean, I think, like I said, I think they're the exact same price here at Tangle Tackle. I will go I will go the Daiwa Saltists all day long. Uh, th those things are bulletproof, and, man, are they smooth on the drag. And they're, they're, they're pricey. I get it. You know, they're a couple hundred, 220, uh, you know, for a, for a good line counter. Uh, but, man, they'll last and last. And, boy, are they, they're just good. Tim H., howdy from Traverse City. Howdy back to you, Tim. All right, so 54 people on here. I got 13 thumbs up, a $10 super chat from Matt Presnitz. My sister Laura's on here saying thank you to Matt. Hey, Laura, how you doing? How's everybody there? Uh, I want to talk about Megan's Army real quick, and you've heard me talk about this before. I got good news, and I got bad news. Tonight, well, let's start with the bad news. Tonight was supposed to be the drawing. We're not going to do it tonight. That's the bad news, but there is good news on the other side of that. The reason we are not doing the drawing tonight is because other people have gotten involved. Um, another person named Stephen Mishler has, has contacted me. He's a river guide here, Manistee and other areas. He is also donating a full day river charter. So now the winner, uh, the winner can also get a full day river charter. Uh, Matt Presnitz, who the guy who just super chatted on here, has donated... Um, a flasher file full of Dreamweaver flashers. Matt told me, going to Tangle Tackle, pick out uh, pick out 12. I think it was 12. If I'm wrong, Matt, correct me. Um, but pick out 12 of your favorite Dreamweaver flashers, throw them in a flasher box. I'll pay for it, and I'll donate it to Megan's Army to try to get more people to come on board. Um, I'm still talking with other people that still also want to get, get on board. Uh, I, I reached out to my friend Buck and Billy Ray Smith. Uh, if you don't know Buck and Billy Ray, he has an amazing YouTube channel. He has a huge YouTube channel. Um, he was on Axemen on the History Channel. Uh, just a super good guy. And he and I talk time to time. We just met you know, over, over the YouTube airwaves from time to time. We talk every now and then. But I reached out to him, and he put it on his live chat tonight. He does a live stream also every Sunday. He put it out to his group. So now I'm getting people from his uh his group also wanting to get involved and make some donations. So anyway, I am putting off the Megan's Army drawing for two more weeks. So I believe that puts it off to July 13th, if I remember right. Uh, so I apologize if you're here to see if you won, but we, we're going to have to delay it because for good reasons, for really good reasons. It's because more things are getting involved. There's going to be more prizes for people to win. So now you're looking at you can win a salmon charter with me um, out on Dark Blue. You can win a river guide, a river guided trip, full day trip with uh, Stephen Mishler. You can win, um, uh, I'm sorry, the flashers from Matt Presnitz. You can win the rod holders from Big John. You can win, I'm going to have two wire diver setups from Tangle Tackle. Uh, what, who else am I missing? Purple Taco donated two prizes. Some really nice custom fly kits and beads. Um, so two people are going to get one of those each. And I think more people are going to get involved and, and add on to this. So the way we're going to play this thing is when I draw the names, when I draw the names, uh, the number one person that I draw is going to get first pick because I just don't want to say, hey, if you're number one, you get this charter uh, or you're number one, you get that charter or whatever. Number one person that I pick here in two weeks is going, I'm sorry, June 13th. Yeah, Jeff Ab Abbott, thank you. Um, so the first person you're going to get first choice. They might not want the charter. They might live in Washington. They might they can't come out here for a charter, or maybe they want. Who knows? They might want something else. So number one person gets first choice, number two second, number three, so on and on and on. So when I draw the names, I'll need your phone numbers. I'll just have you email me your phone numbers. I'll call the number one person, say, which one do you want? Take that one off the board. Call the number two, which one do you want? Take that one off the board, and so on and so on. And that way, hopefully... Everybody will get something that they're going to be able to use. Um, 
uh, you know, along those lines. You understand what I'm saying. A lot of people have donated and said, hey, I don't even put our names in the hat. Uh, we don't we don't even want our names in the hat. These are our donations. Uh, we don't want to win a thing. We're just happy to help. So super cool on that. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, Megan's Army, this is a fundraiser for a girl that went through some really traumatic things in her childhood. Uh, she is now moving forward in her life. She's old enough now to go to college and she wants to become a teacher. Every dime, last penny, nickel, whatever you want to say out of these donations are all going towards her college fund and uh, every last bit of it. In fact, more than every last bit of it because I'm, I'm tossing some in as well. So anyway, uh, yeah, I just wanted to go over that. So anyway, June 13th, not July 13th, June 13th will be the drawing on that. And uh, so thanks again to everybody that is helping out on that. And Buck and Billy Ray, if you're on here watching, I know you do sometimes. Thank you again for shouting that out on your channel. Uh, there are some people coming over and uh, and helping out from there. So, all right. Wisconsin is here. Dennis Clement, if I said that right. Mike F. throwing me some thumbs up. Thank you so much. Let's do the fishing report. Uh, we'll get that out of the way. We're 11 minutes in. All right, fishing report. I fished this morning, um, and that's a, that's obviously the freshest trip that I have. Talked to a bunch of other boats out there. Uh, fishing's tough right now out of Manistee. Down south, I understand it's a little bit better. Ludington, maybe all the way down to Little Point. Uh, seems to be, from what I'm hearing, uh, from what I'm hearing, those ports are doing a little bit better right now on Kings. The Kings that we had out here in front of Manistee, I think the majority of them shot up the river. There's still a few nomads out there lurking around. We had 11 fish this morning. Uh, no, I'm sorry, 10 fish this morning. We got uh, we had three people on board, three customers. We got their limited lake trout, and then we had a really nice bonus 20-pound king at the end of the day. Uh, came out of 225 on a uh, green night spoon, the moonshine green night. And everything else that we had on the trout was uh, down on the bottom. The divers digging deep down on the bottom. Uh, with the, the double chrome spin doctors, I don't have one. I don't know why I look down. I, I know I don't have one. This is not it. But uh, double chrome spin doctors, KRW Wonderbread Laker Lake Trout gear, uh, KRW Lake Trout takers. Um, what was the other one that was going? Doctor Midnight was there. Wonderbread seemed to be the big one today. That seemed to take the majority of them. Uh, but all those were down on divers. You know, digging down on the bottom. I did have a shoot rigger go off one time with another nice, another nice trout, also with a uh, double. That was with a double pearl spin or a double pearl spinny, with a uh, pickled sunshine fly on that. We also had bites on. We had a couple on long lines. We had uh, one on a five color with a gold rasta goose. That gold rasta goose, that thing is, it's making a name for itself. If you can get some, because I know there seem to be sold out everywhere. But if you can get some, that is a really good spoon, both in the Super Slim and in the Dreamweaver size. So the small and the medium size. That thing has taken fish every time I've been out the last few times. So yeah, that went on a five color. Uh, and then we had another rip on, a, on another long line, and I can't remember what it was, other than the, the 20 pound king, which came on that 225 copper uh, with a uh, Moonshine Green Knight mag spoon on there. So if I was going out in the morning uh, out of Manistee, I, I would probably point south. I think I'd point down to uh, maybe the eights up to the twelves, work that area, and I'd just be searching water. I'd be searching anywhere from 80 feet out to maybe even 200, 250 feet, just looking for marks, looking for bites, trying to figure out where those kings, because they are nomads right now. They're not they're not schooled up anywhere. The water's super, super cold. Um, so they're, they're not sitting on thermoclines. Um, they're probably sitting near bait. If you find bait out there, they're probably sitting nearby on that. Or they're just going to be sitting on slight structure out there. So, yeah, I'd be out on a, on a little search mission in the morning if I was going. I'm not. Uh, tomorrow morning I have off, which is going to be nice. That's what I would be doing. Just running grids. I'd run I'd run north-south you know, for a couple times. And if I can't find anything going north-south, I would put it on a straight west and troll out straight west, waves allowing and conditions allowing until I, I started to find fish or get bit. So And you might not get bit. It's that time of the year. We're coming into June. It can get really slow here this time of the year. And we all know that. So that's part of it. And we understand that's all part of it. Uh, so again, uh, some of the things that are working. Hey, if you don't know this already, every Wednesday or Thursday, somebody just said they know a charter out of Holland caught a 31-pounder. Outstanding. Well done. 
But yeah, every Wednesday or Thursday on Instagram, Tangle Tackle Fishing on Instagram, I'm putting out a virtual hot board, which just means that I'm putting out baits that have been using over the week. People that I've talked to give me information. I'll give you the hot baits that are likely going into the weekend. I'll also give you depths and locations and things like that. And any other intel I can give you, I'll give you that as well. So if you want to follow us on Instagram, uh, check us out. Like I said, it's Tangle Tackle Fishing on there. You can follow us and you'll get that report every Wednesday or Thursday leading into the weekend. Just to give you something a little fresh, you know, going into the weekend. All right. Anyway, that's the fishing report around here. A little slow on the slow side. We had 10 fish. Oh, I got boarded by the Coast Guard too <laughs> on the way back into Manistee. Um, I saw them out there. They were out there in the rib. They were stopping boats. And uh, sure enough, they, they came up behind me and I, you know what? I give those guys a lot of credit because I know they take a lot of flack. It's not an easy job for them to do. You know, people are out there boating and fishing and wanting to have fun. But these guys got a job to do. They, they got to check boats out. So, hey, I welcomed them on board. Uh, we uh, did about a 10-minute inspection. Everything passed with flying colors. I gave them a salute on the way. Have a great day. Be safe. And, uh, yeah, no big deal. I mean, if if you're doing everything right, who cares? You got nothing to worry about. Give them 10 minutes. Let them do their job, and they're on their way. But anyway, they said they talked to a bunch of other, they would checking a lot of other boats the way it sounded. And uh, we had one of the bigger boxes this morning. So, yeah, it is what it is. Matt Presidents, welcome on your boat anytime they want. Yeah, cool. Good, good attitude. Because I know they go on some boats and they catch, they catch you know what, they catch flack. And, uh, you know, just realize they're doing their job. And they do, they do a good job. They really do. Um, they save lives. I see them out of Manistee all the time, running their running their uh, their ribs out there, their fast movers out there, helicopter coming down from Traverse City. They save lives. Um, that's what they're there for. They'll tow in boats sometimes. You know, if you're out there and you're you're stranded, hey, they're doing what they need to do. Anyway, enough said on that. Off off my uh, two cent podium on that one. Anyway, we're here for meat rigs tonight. Let's talk about meat rigs. So let's do it this way. I'm just going to go over a, a brief overview on meat rigs. We'll go over how to set them up. Um, meat rigs, I just put a video out on meat rigs about two days ago. Well, two days ago, I think, or yesterday. I don't know. My brain's melted together. Uh, anyway, I just put one out within the last couple of days. Must have meat rigs. And on that video, excuse me, that was dots, pretzels right there. Sorry. On that video, um, I go over some of my must-have meat rigs, the meat rigs that have worked well for me over the years, not only me, but other charter boats I've been on, on Jim's uh, tournament boat. Um, yeah. Um, I also go over some of the spin doctors that I like to match those meat rigs up with. So that information is out there on a video, like I said, just came out yesterday or the day before. Here's the big thing. Uh, you guys know when I talk about something, and if it happens to be meat rigs, there's a good chance that Tangle Tackle will be having a sale on that very shortly. I think you guys have figured that out by now. It's pretty pretty transparent. So, um, at 9 o'clock tonight, if you are a Tangle Tackle member, and the way you become a Tangle Tackle member is you go on TangledTackleCompany.com. Right there on the homepage, you put in your email. Uh, you're a member. It doesn't cost a thing. It does not cost a dime. We don't store your information or sell it to anyone. It is strictly there to make you a member. And it's there so that you can get emails when we do sales and other promos, things like that. So at 9 o'clock tonight, if you are a member, and if you're not, I highly recommend that you hop on there and you get that done. Uh, you will get an email tonight about the meat rig sale. And I'm not going to tell you what it, how much off it is. Um, I'm going to tell you it's going to be on all meat. I'll tell you that. It's on all meat rigs in the store. I'll tell you that. Um, and you're going to get a certain amount off on meat rigs. So if you're looking to stock up on your meat rig program and you want to save money, now would be a good time to do it. Again, TangleTackleCompany.com. Um, sign up right there on the front page. You're a member. And uh, um, you're good to go. Yeah, you're good to go. All right. Uh, Brad Deutschman, same pricing on back orders. Don't know. Um, I am not in control of that part of the program. I would imagine so, uh, but you would have to call and ask the shop. And the emails normally say whether or not these are uh, back orderable or they're uh, first come first served. The emails will normally give that information. Does that include just the meatheads too? Nick Padula, that's a good question. Um, 
I, I don't know the answer to that. But there, you know you can get uh, Just Meatheads, I believe, on Tangle Tackle. Um, if it's not, you know what? I'll get a hold of the owner after I get done with this uh, video, and I'll ask him that. And uh, if you don't see it on the email, then probably not. But I know a lot of you guys and gals out there, you like to make your own stuff just like me. Um, and buying your own just the meat head and making that, that meat rig yourself, that's a, that's a ton of fun. So, yeah, all right. All right, so that's the info on the, the sale. Let's talk about meat rigs. So right here, I have probably my favorite meat rig setup. I've got an 8-inch double pearl spin doctor. And I've said this before, and you guys all know this, but I'll say it again. 8-inch or 10-inch spin doctors uh, work just fine for meat rigs. Some people are only, uh, they say, hey, i got to have 10-inch spin doctors for, uh, for meat rigs. Hey. Um, you can do it with eight inch too. I catch them all day long on eight inch, but it's your call, whatever way you want to do it. So that's the eight inch. Somebody asked me the other day about the 12 inch, the Bigfoot, um, spin doctors from Dreamweaver. Uh, if I still use them and the answer is, yeah, I, I do occasionally, not, not often, uh, but they do work. Uh, I, I think they take the place of the big, you know, the big Beckhold and Sons double white flasher. I think they can take that place. Um, that's a tough niche to fill though, right there. I mean, that's a really good flasher, so they will work as well, but my go-to normally are eight inches or 10 inches, but it's typically the eight inch. So this is my number one, number one spin doctor for meat rigs. This is my number one meat rig. This is the pickled sunshine meat rig. I mean, that thing right there, it works. If meat rigs are going, this thing works. We'll take that out of the package. <clears throat> there are many other out there that work really well, and that's why I put that video out there. This is just the one I'm doing tonight. We'll pop this out of the package, and we'll take a look at it, and get an, you can get an idea of what the components are, you know, how they work, things like that. I just stuck a hook in my finger. That felt good. Let's try not to do that a second time. I got home today, and uh, I ran my hand along along the edge of a banister in my in my house and there must have been a little frayed edge or something there with the wood man if i did not stick about a half inch splinter right underneath my fingernail boy did that make me holler that felt really good anyway have you ever done that that sucks that hurts anyway here's the meat meat rig itself so dreamweaver puts it out in two components you got the teaser components let me scoot up here you got the teaser components the toothpicks don't need to be in there that's just added. You got the teasers and you got the meat head itself. All right. All you got to do is get these teasers out. Dreamweaver comes with a little foil on there to keep them in place. Just grab all of that, just drop them out. So if I remember right, I think this is 36 inches from. From leading end back to the business end, 36 inches. I believe the teasers are 12 inches apart. You get three of them right there. All of them on this rig are pickled sunshines. And then the business end, we'll just get that out. That comes with a swivel as well. What I like about this setup is say I'm running the pickled sunshine teaser rig but this meat head is not producing, or this meat, head, this meat head is damaged, or for some reason I want to change that out. That's what I like about Dreamweaver's setup, is that they make it so you can actually change that thing right out. Swivel right on the end of that, take it off the teasers, and you're good to go. My Spin Doctor setup status quo, which means that my back swivel is by the fins, and my front swivel is by, or is in the front hole. So I asked Dreamweaver one time, why do you have two holes up here on the front. And they said, I got to remember what the answer was. Um, they said that was how it was produced long, long, long time ago. And I think they asked if that could be taken away. I think it would have cost them more to have that hole removed. So they just said, heck with it. We'll just leave it. Um, the back one, the, you know, where the fins are, I always run it on the fin side because you get more action that way. If you run it on the non-fin side, it's going to be on the inside of the loop as it spins, and you're not going to get so much action on your flies or your meat rig. So I always run mine on the fin side. Dreamweavers also come with a really good high-quality ball bearing swivel up front and a barrel swivel on the back. All we're going to do is go grab that meat rig. 
we're gonna hook it right they come with a swivel on the front as well we're just gonna hook it right on the back of that spin doctor <clears throat> right there so it's on the back of the spin doctor teasers going and then on the back of the teasers there's another double barrel swivel there we will just hook our meat head right onto that now this can be run on downriggers divers coppers lead core you name it you can run it on pretty much anything out there that is your meat rigs your meat rig setup right there all the way back to the business end now there's a couple different ways you can put your you can uh you can space out how um your your strips uh run these things dreamweaver takes the the guessing out of it they have a really nice piece of surgical tubing right there <coughs> for the good spacing put your meat head in there pop it in put a toothpick in there you don't have to worry about the spacing it's pretty much spot on on another rig like this uh, Diabolical rig, Diabolical is my number two meat rig. I, I'm a Dreamweaver guy through and through. You guys know that. But I tell you what, my friend Mark McClutchy owns Diabolical, and he makes some really good rigs. Um, he, I know he's, these are custom meat heads. He designed these, hand pours them, or he has somebody else hand pour them. These things run really, really good. But let me bust this one open. You can see some of the differences. And I go over some of my favorite diabolical ones on the video as well. Uh, if I can get this thing off here. Hold on. All right. So the diabolical rig comes all in one section. It's not segmented like the Dreamweaver. It is all one section. There we go. So from, you know, leading edge back to teaser teaser and then back to meathead it's not segmented in any way so you're gonna if you want to change out that meathead on this thing you would actually have to cut that right there or just go with a whole different uh a whole different thing so the way that they've designed their meat heads for when they put their meat strips in this just free floats back here you just grab a toothpick i also suggest going longer than you need to go way longer than you need to Jam a toothpick in the back hole right there. Eh, that broke off, but that's fine. And uh, now that that toothpick is in there, you can bring that thing forward and it'll stay pretty well. So when your meat strip is in there, um, when you put that in there, you want your hooks right at the very end of that meat strip. I got some meat strips here. Actually, I could. I'm not going to bust one out because this is a brand new package, but you can see what I mean. These are the meat strips. So if that thing's in there, that part's going to be in the meat head. This part's going to be back there at the end. You want your hook right back there, right back at the tail. It almost, I almost think of it as looking like a tail. <clears throat> These are big one cut bait. If you don't know about this company, you should. Uh, I, I said this before, I'm Dreamweaver through and through, and I love their meat strips, but I got into these things last year. They come four to a pack, so you get a few less. But man, do these things last and man, are they well crafted. These are these are alewife from the Toronto area up in Canada. So it's actual alewife, which is what the actual bait fish is out here in Lake Michigan. Uh, they are super thick. They're just you, you actually have to trim these down sometimes. They're they're so big. But boy, do they last. Super durable, great scent. Um, I mean, if you call if you call dead fish a good scent, yeah, I guess so. But uh, yeah, they stink in a good way. But they also come in some pretty unique things um, I know they have them in glow you can actually get these things where the meat strips are glowing uh, they have some in UV they have a whole bunch of different things out there so you can you can mix and match we have these at Tangled Tackle but you can order them I believe from uh, the big one cut bait company as well uh, and the other cool thing about here or about these is they don't require refrigeration you can leave the I don't wouldn't recommend it to be honest with you you can leave these supposedly um out in the sun and hey my mom just chimed on hey hi mom love you how you doing um you can apparently leave these out in the sun i still wouldn't recommend it but they say you can all the scales are on here uh like i said thick cut these are these are really there's a really really good company out there uh, what i like about these is just how durable they are 
I can run one strip. This is actually last year's package. I popped it out of the fridge or the uh, freezer. Yeah, I ran some today. They were just like they're still brand new. They last and they last and they last. I can throw these on a meat rig all day long. They can take bites. I can take it off. I can throw it back in the freezer. And the next day I'm using the same meat strip. So that's what I like about these. And amongst the, all the other things. But where was I? Where was I going? Oh, so I was just showing you the diabolical rig. The difference is, like I said, it is all one piece. Excellent meat head back here. I mean, these things spin really, really, really good. Uh, and they come with a peg, so you don't have to toothpick the, the herring strip in there or the alewife strip. There's a reusable peg, but of course I lose that thing almost every time. And they also, I just noticed this, they also have this little slidable bead, so if you don't want to use a toothpick, you can slide that bead down. That will actually also space out uh, your hook for your meat strips. So let's talk about when do we run meat rigs. I run them from the first day on all through the year. I normally have <clears throat> at least one out there, um, at least one. If it's going to be a really good meat bite, if we're catching them on meat rigs, I will have several out there. There's days I have nothing but meat rigs out there. <coughs> Excuse me. Meat rigs seem to produce really well, but the better thing about them is they seem to produce really big fish. Um, they just do. In tournament time, uh, if you can get your meat program going in tournament time, you're going to do really well. I'll tell you that right now. Speeds I like to run, slower is better for meat rigs. I'll say that. It is better, but don't be handcuffed to that. Don't be handcuffed to that adage, I have to go slow on meat rigs. Because there's days out there I'm running 2.4 to 2.5, and my spoons are all working good, and my meat rigs are working well as well. The big thing is you just don't want, eh, let me find that. You don't want this meat head down on the water just spinning like a, a you know, like a tornado. Um, what I look for is this thing goes through the water. It's going to go through and flip over. I look for one rotation about every second to second and a half. And my friend George Freeman described this really well. Uh, he says what he likes to see is as that meat head folds over, as it gets to the top, it almost just falls and rolls back up to the top and then almost just falls. That's a really good way to describe it. If your meat head is down there just spinning like crazy, you know, do, 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 that ain't going to work for you. I'm going to tell you right now, it's not going to work. Slow that thing down. Dream weavers are a little more tunable, which means I can bend that meat head around. The Diabolical, the John Kings, the Muscle Heads, things like that. That thing is hardly tunable at all. That's a really, really stiff, um, stiff rig. Uh, if you want to tune a half pound, that if you take a lighter and get that warm, you can actually, you can make that thing somewhat malleable. Uh, you can make that thing uh, do what you want it to do. So if, uh, if it's not running right for you, stick that thing down in the water. Uh, like I said, if you're going on a downrigger, stick that thing down in the water. Take a look at it. Make sure that it's running right before you let that thing all the way out there. Because otherwise, you're just wasting time. You've got a meat rig out there doing something that it's not supposed to do. It's not going to take fish for you. Check it. It's worth the time just checking it in the water. Make sure that that thing's rolling right for you. All right. So speeds. I mean, I'll crawl them down sometime to 1.7 to 1.8. Um... 2.0 was a really good speed. 2.0, 2.1 is a really good speed. But there are times if I have them out in my program with my spoons and my plugs, um, I can get up there to 2.4, 2.5, even 2.6, and I'll still get bit on them. All right. Yeah, Ray, uh, Ray Castillo just asked, if you don't have a down, I, I, admit, I think that was a question. If you don't have a downrigger, yeah, you can put them on a diver, watch them on the side of the boat. You can throw them on the back of a 300 copper or a 10 color or something like that. Throw it off the back of the boat. Just take a look at it. Make sure that it's down in the water, you know, a foot or two, and just watch for that roll. Like I said, it's just an up and fall over, up, fall over. That's what you're looking for. If you're not getting that right, either either uh, adjust the speed on the boat or adjust the uh, the rig itself. Yeah, Phil Quinn, you're absolutely right. Dipsies are great for meat rigs. So, yeah, my normal program, if I'm running meat, um, my, my low divers are my meat divers. Uh, my high divers, I normally have flash or fly. My low divers are meat rigs. Uh, my shoot rigger is, again, probably a big flasher and a fly, but then I'll have another meat rig on another down rigger, and I'd like to have at least one other meat rig out there on, like, a 300 copper or another long 225 copper, something 400 copper, uh, something like that. So, and if I'm going complete all meat program, it's on everything out there. 
And I'm talking to every rigger, every diver, every long line. It is all complete meat. And then I can really tune in my speed because I don't have to worry about other um, you know, spoons or plugs or things out there that might be that might be failing because of slow speeds. That's when I can really dial in a good speed, take that boat or take the boat down to 2 21, even 1-9. And boy, if the meat rig bite is on and you got a whole meat program out there, you're, you better hang on because you're going to have some monsters. You're going to have a good time. Guaranteed. Guaranteed, not guaranteed. There you go. <laughs> All right. Um, you got questions on meat rigs? That was a really brief overview. I do have another video on this channel that really goes in a lot more depth on meat rigs. I'll show you how to put the meat strips into the meat heads. Uh, I'll go over a lot of other things on that. So search this channel. Just look up meat rigs. Uh, you'll find it, I'm sure. But uh, that was a really brief, quick overview. But I get a lot of questions on these things. It's it's always good to start from scratch. It's always good to go right back to the basics and just talk about things. So if you have questions, we're 35 minutes in. We're 80 people. Um, yeah, throw, throw the questions out there. I'll cover them up. Otherwise, we can get out of here. You can get back to your barbecues and your family and your, your adult beverages. I think I... I might start up a bonfire tonight at my place. I might have a couple of adult beverages myself. It's been a few weeks since I've had one, so yeah. Jason Wilkerson, ever run a naked rig? So no teasers is what I'm saying. Is what you're saying? Yes, I have. Um, I, in fact, sometimes around the pier heads late in the year, I will uh, shorten up the leads to like 25 to 28 inches, and I'll run no teasers, naked meat head behind a spin doctor, and it can do really, really well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Phil Quinn, storage and cleaning of them. Um, we don't clean our baits. I get that question sometimes if we clean our baits and what do I use? We don't. Um, storage, what I normally use is right on the spin doctor itself. I've done that before. I'll put a piece of uh, pipe insulation on there, wrap that meat rig around there. The pipe insulation or a pool noodle is really nice because you don't get all the, or the, the really hard bends in the lines, things like that. And then as you get to that meat head, because of the curvature of that pool noodle or that swim insulation, you can lay that meat head's curve right on top of that. And they almost fit perfectly. They store really well that way. And then I just pop them into a Dreamweaver flasher file. Good to go. That's how I store mine. Um, if I have extras, I'll throw them into a tote. Um, I got a lot of good storage here on this boat. And uh, I can get to them quickly. But if those are my go-tos, my like real go-tos, uh, pipe insulation into a flasher file, and I keep it nearby. All right, really good question, though, Phil. All right, what else you guys got? <clears throat> 77 people here, 31 thumbs up. Again, a $10 super chat from Matt President. Man, that was really cool of you, Matt. Thanks for doing that. Appreciate that. And my mom's here. Everybody say hi to my mom if you don't mind. All right, uh, Bill Gerlach. So, yeah, Bill, typically, like I said, an 8-inch spin doctor or a 10-inch spin doctor is my go-to for my meat rigs. You can run them off paddles. I do that as well. My 8-inch or eight inch paddles are my preferred. If I'm running them on downriggers, um, <laughs> Jeff Spear, hello, Mom. <laughs> um, if I'm running them on my downriggers, I, I feel tighter is better, so I don't go normally past um, uh, about 30 feet, 35 feet. Uh, there's some people let them way, way back. Uh, I think you're asking for trouble by doing that. Uh, but if you can get away with it, it, might not be a bad idea. But typically 20 to 30 feet off my downriggers. Leads on my divers are my typical leads, my 18 to 20 foot leads. Chris Olson saying hi to my mom. Everybody, you guys are so cool. Appreciate that. Make my mom, make my mom happy. Thank you. All right, what else you got? <laughs> Thanks, Bill Gerlock. You're welcome, man. All right, don't forget about Megan's Army. If, you, if you're thinking about getting involved in this thing, it's $10 an entry. Um, for $10, you get an entry into it, and we got huge prizes again. Uh, my charter, a river charter, bunch of equipment, bunch of really great stuff. Um, $10 gets you an entry in there. If you donate $100 to it, it gets you 15 entries into it. All that information is on this channel under the Megan's Army video. Um, we're extending, like I said that dead, like I said, we're extending that deadline out two more weeks uh, until June 13th. But thank you so much to everybody that has donated. If you're thinking about doing it, man, hop on. You can win some really nice stuff, and it is a really, 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 really good cause. All right. Questions are slowing down. 
people got better things to do. I get it. Who wants to sit here and talk fishing? <laughs> Although I'd do it all night probably. Phil Quinn, um, artificial meat strips. So you're not the first one that's asked me that. I haven't run any yet. They're they're intriguing. I'll say that. Uh, yeah, Bill. I'll I'll make sure to put the, Bill Gerlach want to make sure I put that link up to the Megan's Army. Uh, either tonight or tomorrow, I'll have that link up on this video. Just look up. I think it pops up on this side. Uh, you'll see it there. Uh, and just click or just search Megan's Army on this channel. Look around. That video came out just a couple weeks ago. Yeah, definitely. And don't forget about the uh, the meat rig sale tonight, 9 o'clock, starting on Tangle Tackle. Become a member, get a whole bunch of money off, buy some good meat rigs. Get out there, catch monster salmon, put huge smiles on your face, <laughs> catch a world record. Bill, Dick Bill Dickens, no, I don't use any scent. He wanted to know if I put any scent on uh, my meat or the spoons. Diet, you know, things like that. No, I don't put any scent cure on anything. Uh, we tried that in the past, and it was a absolute, <laughs> it was a show. Put it that way. We put it, uh, we had a jar of it one time on, on Jim's boat. We were fishing a tournament, and uh, we had a squeeze bottle of some stuff some guys wanted us to test out. So we were dumping it on spoons. We were dumping it on meat strips. We were dumping it all over the place, and it got all over the deck. And we looked like ice skaters back there. And it was a bumpy, bumpy day. So every time we'd take a wave, we were crashing into each other. Uh, it was just ugly. Absolutely ugly. So we didn't see any real, or I, I never, I didn't see any real advantage to it. So I stay away from it. Some people swear by that scent cure stuff. I just don't. Um, I keep things pretty simple. And uh, you, you, if you watch my videos, you know that about me. The simpler, the better for me. So if it works for you and you want to try it, hey, go for it. It's just not something that I do. All right. Good question, though. That was a real good question. Yeah, keep it simple, stupid. You named it, Jeff. K-I-S-S. -S. All right. Let's bug out. Let's pop smoke. Let's get out of here. Um, thanks for being here, everyone. Happy Memorial Day to you. Um, really appreciate everybody coming out here on Sunday nights. I knew this one was going to be kind of light. I mean, we've got 75 people here. That's not really light, but I know people got things going on for the weekend. So thanks for being here, everyone. Go be safe. Go enjoy your family. Um, remember Memorial Day. It's not about just having a day off. Remember the real reason for Memorial Day. I, I feel that's very, very important. Honor those that have made the ultimate sacrifice. Honor those that uh, honor those families as well that have lost people. So that's, that's very near and dear to me. So... So thank you for everyone for being here. Happy Memorial Day. Go catch huge fish. Love you all. See ya. Take care.